Hi folks, this is Nat. This is going to be a video lesson on identifying the different types of quadrilaterals. There's a whole bunch of different things and qualities that quadrilaterals have, and um, there's a lot of different ways to identify them, but we're not going to go into every single one today. We're going to be focusing primarily on things like how many parallel sides does it have, um, and ha does it have right angles or not. And that'll get us through most of what we need. So the first question we should probably answer is, what is a quadrilateral? A quadrilateral is any polygon that has four sides and four angles. And we'll get more into the idea of what a polygon is later, um, but at this point, pretty much anything you see that has four straight sides that are all joined up is going to be a quadrilateral. So, so long as I make something that has four sides, it is a quadrilateral, and it might be a quadrilateral we've seen a lot of. Um, or it might be a quadrilateral that we don't even have a name for besides quadrilateral, but basically four sides, four angles. Because we see them so often, we actually have a bunch of classifications for quadrilaterals um, beyond just the normal stuff we have for, say, other shapes like pentagons. Um, and we're going to get more into that in this lesson. When it comes to classifying quadrilaterals, the first and probably most important question you're going to ask yourself is how many sets of parallel sides does it have? And depending on the answer to this question, you're going to be looking at one of several different types of quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral might have no parallel sides. If that's the case, uh, you might be looking at just an unclassifiable garden variety quadrilateral, nothing special at all. Or you might be looking at a dart. And we'll talk about how to identify a dart versus a regular quadrilateral. Or you might be looking at a kite. On the other hand, if your quadrilateral has exactly one set of parallel sides, you're looking at something different. All of these types of quadrilaterals are called trapezoids. Finally, if the quadrilateral you're looking at has two sets of sides that are parallel, then you're talking about a type of parallelogram. And some of these categories break down even further than that, but those are kind of the big things you'll see off the bat. So again, identifying the number of parallel sides is probably the most important first step in classifying what quadrilateral you're looking at. So returning to the idea of quadrilaterals that have no parallel sides, there's a couple different types of these, so you kind of have a follow-up question you can ask yourself in this scenario, and that's, are any of the sides congruent, or do they have the same length? If the answer to that question is either that there are no sets of congruent sides, or only one set of congruent sides, then what you're looking at is nothing, really. It's just a standard quadrilateral. On the other hand, if the answer is that it has two sets of congruent sides, then you're looking at either a kite or a dart. The only difference between these two things is that one of them is concave and one of them is convex. The kite, if you notice, has no sides of it that kind of go into itself. That means that the kite is convex. Whereas looking at the dart, you notice, notice that this angle here seems to be pushed in. It's got a reflex angle on the inside is another way to think about that. Um, and that is an example of something that is concave. So if there's two sets of congruent sides, it's either a kite or a dart. And the way you tell the difference is if it's convex, it's a kite. And if it's concave, it's a dart. Moving on again, there are uh, quadrilaterals that have one set of parallel sides, and those are always going to be trapezoids. Now, there are different types of trapezoids. There are trapezoids that might have right angles. There are trapezoids that might have obtuse angles inside of them. Um, there are trapezoids where opposite sides might be congruent. But we don't really have to worry about that right now. All you all have to care about is that if you see one set of parallel lines, that is a trapezoid and nothing else. So again, when there are two sets of parallel sides, we have the conveniently named parallelogram. 
And there's a bunch of different types of parallelograms. And all the things we're going to talk about next are going to be different sorts. But they're all parallelograms. So remember, the only thing something has to have in order to be a parallelogram is two sets of parallel lines. So basically the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. From there, maybe it has some other qualities. Maybe, for example, it has all right angles. In that case, it's a parallelogram, but it's also a rectangle, which, by the way, is a type of parallelogram. So again, let's take, kind of take a look at our rectangle here. I see, first of all, it's a parallelogram, and I know that because I see that this side is parallel to this side, and I see that this side is parallel to this side. So it's a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides. I also see, in addition to being a parallelogram, it's a parallelogram with all right angles, and that's what makes it a rectangle. Rectangle, by the way, means right angle, rect, right angle. On the other hand, we might see a parallelogram that has all congruent sides. Here I see a parallelogram uh, that has all congruent sides. All the sides are the same length. It's not a rectangle. It doesn't have any right angles. Um, kids sometimes mistakenly call this a diamond because actually it looks kind of like a diamond. And in fact, a diamond is a type of this. Um, it's called a rhombus. That's the official mathy name for a diamond, if you want to think about it that way. Um, but it's just a parallelogram that has all congruent sides. Every side is the same length, not just two, which would be true of a parallelogram, but all four. Finally, there are quadrilaterals that are parallelograms that have all congruent sides and all right angles. They have the qualities of both the rhombus and the rectangle. And that, of course, is the square. Identifying a square is not particularly hard. You're used to it. You started doing it probably in kindergarten. And the thing that trips people up is understanding that a square is a parallelogram. A square actually is a rectangle, and a square is a rhombus. It's a type of all of those things. So the parallelogram is the big category of things, and each of these other classifications is a subcategory of parallelograms. So we have rectangles that are also parallelograms, and we have rhombuses that are also parallelograms. But not all parallelograms are going to be rhombuses or rectangles. Similarly, a square is an example of a rhombus. So all squares are rhombuses, and all squares are rectangles. But not all rhombuses have to be squares, and not all rectangles have to be squares. So we're getting into more and more specific types of parallelograms with each of these classifications. So let's do some quick examples of how we can use this. Um, again, the question I'm going to start with, the, probably the most important question, is how many parallel sides do I see? So that's going to be where I begin no matter what. Looking at this first example, um, I see that it appears to have this set of parallel sides. So it has one set of parallel sides, which actually makes the classification really easy. When there's only one set and exactly one set, what I'm looking at is going to be a trapezoid, no matter what. So here I'm looking at a trapezoid. Second one down gets a little trickier. Um, what I'm seeing is that there don't seem to be any parallel sides. This one and this one don't seem to be parallel to each other, and this one and this one don't seem to be parallel to each other. So I know it's not a trapezoid, and I know it's not a parallelogram. Um, from there I might ask myself, well, does it have any congruent sides? Um, and I certainly don't think it has two sets of congruent sides, so it's not going to be a kite or a dart, which leads us, or leaves us, sorry, with only one option. It's just a regular quadrilateral. There's nothing special about this one at all. Finally, looking down at this bottom one, going back to the idea of parallel sides, I see that this one seems to have parallel sides here and here. And it also looks like these might be parallel, too. I'm going to assume that they are. 
So if I have two sets of parallel sides, I know I'm looking at a parallelogram. But I might ask myself, is it a more specific type of parallelogram? Does it have all right angles? The answer seems to be no. I don't see right angles. Uh, and then I might ask, well, are they all congruent sides? This one seems a lot shorter than this one, so I don't think it's got congruent sides. Which means that here I'm looking at just a regular old parallelogram. We'll do two more quick examples. So again, going back to my parallel sides question, I'm looking at my one on the top here. This does not seem to be parallel to that. They look like they would eventually cross if they continued. And I would say the same thing here. These are not parallel to one another. Um, so I'm looking at, again, either a plain old quadrilateral, a dart, or a kite. Um, the fact that this looks like a kite should probably tip me off that that might be what it is. Um, and the thing that's really going to clinch it is if I look, those two sides seem to be the same size. And these two sides seem to be the same size. I'm going to assume they are. So that makes that a kite. I know it's not a dart because it doesn't push in on itself. It is convex. Moving on down. I'm looking at this one. Um, these two seem to be parallel. Maybe not. I'm going to assume they are. If they are, these also seem to be parallel. So I'm looking again at another type of parallelogram. In this case, in addition to having parallel sides, I would say that these all seem to be about the same length. So I'm going to assume these are congruent sides. So I am looking not at a regular old parallelogram, but a specific type of parallelogram. In this case, a rhombus. A parallelogram with all congruent sides. And that's more or less the process I would use to classify different quadrilaterals. There is one more thing to know about quadrilaterals, and it's not classification oriented at all. Um, it's about the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral. If you think back to a triangle, the sum of the angles in a triangle always made exactly 180 degrees. So if I knew that two of my angles were 60 and 70 degrees, I'd know that my missing angle had to be 50 because that's what's going to add up to 180. Something similar is true with quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals angles always add up to 360 degrees. 360 degrees is the magic number. So similarly to before, if I know three angles, I can always find the missing fourth angle because I know it'll have to make 360 degrees. So here I see I've got 100, 100, 130. That's 330 degrees. And what's missing has got to be 30 degrees because that's the only thing that's going to make 360. Keep in mind, this drawing is not to scale. I recognize that's not a 30-degree angle, but this is the idea. Um, all the angles of a quadrilateral will always sum to 360, and that's true no matter what. It's true for parallelograms. It's true for trapezoids. And it's true for regular old quadrilaterals, kites, and darts. They will all have angles that sum to 360 degrees. So here are your practice problems for the lesson. Um, for each of these, uh, one, two, and three, you need to give the most specific classification for each of them. Uh, might be that there is a less specific one you could give, but give the most specific. And explain why you know that to be the case. So why is this the best classification? Uh, number four, you're just finding the missing angle measurement uh, where that question mark is. Alrighty, good luck.